Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamerguru.com. Today I'm looking at a pattern that seems rather elaborate and I'd like to break it down and recreate it in Affinity Designer. Let's take a closer look at the pattern. Like most patterns, there will be a underlying repeating shape that forms the pattern. So when I take opacity off a little bit and look for my repeating shape, we have something like that that is repeated throughout. We have a 3D cube and a 3D Y shape that are overlaying from the bottom to the top. When we go in and analyze these a little bit closer, the cube and the Y shape are very similar. So basically the Y shape is a part of the cube in order to be repeating. And the cube itself consists of the same shapes on the left and the right side. And it's just the coloring that makes the difference and gives us the idea of a 3D object. Basically, all we need to do is create the 3D cube. Let's start with a rectangle. I make this rectangle a group because the group can be turned into a symbol. That way we can create the pattern and tweak it and we just have to work on one and see the change on all of them and that way we get a live preview. Next up I change the width of the stroke. I want something rather wide and I will place it inside. That way I get a solid block. Too thin a line will make it really hard to adjust the pattern. Too thick a line will leave you little room for the intersections. So it's a balance, but we'll see when we start tiling. Let's start by skewing it, making sure the width is right, duplicating the other sides, giving them a color to give us a 3D effect duplicating one of the sides to create the inner shapes. This one I will then expand the stroke so I get a shape. I duplicate and cut parts to then get the elements that I can easily create with a node tool for each of the segments. As I'm building this by eye, I'm sure there's a mathematical grid based approach to this. That leaves me with some tweaking. I go in with the node tool, use the align to align the nodes and make sure that the other shapes are in place. And we have our 3D cube. Next up, we create the Y. We know the Y is the inner part of our cube. So I duplicate the cube and place it inside a clip that cuts just the inner part. If I go in here, and delete all the inner bits and hide the cube. We have our Y. Let's start aligning them and see if this actually works. This is where the symbol comes in. We have now created one symbol that contains the cube and the Y. We can move that and place it and adjust it. We have the pattern and it could be broken down into easy to create 3D looking objects, all done in Affinity Designer with very little effort. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment if there's something you want me to cover in the next videos and I'll see you again soon.